Hey, it's Jazz here from thebassmastermind.com. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you three tips to improve your jazz walking bass lines on electric bass. I'll also be showing you a couple of bass players I think are masters when it comes to playing jazz, specifically jazz and walking bass lines on electric bass. And if you are an electric bass player and you wanna get into playing authentic, jazz walking bass lines, then make sure to stay till the end of the video where I've handpicked three walking bass lines you should transcribe if you're just getting into uh, walking bass and jazz on electric. So let's grab your bass and dive straight in. So playing jazz on electric bass kind of sucks sometimes and, and here's why. The main reason why trying to emulate a double bass on electric is so hard is because of the decay, the sustain and the attack. So the attack and how long the note sustains as well um, as far as EQ and the sonic space it takes up. The problem is that a double bass has a big attack and short decay. So something like and an electric bass has a small attack and long decay. So so as you can see on the screen here, we've got the electric bass um, with a small attack. It's a small triangle, it's like a long triangle and the note sustains a long time. So um, there's a small attack and the decay is, is quite long over time. And the double bass on the other hand has quite a big attack. The first part of the note is quite big and then the note kind of tails off a lot quicker. And that's the real main difference between the electric and double bass. And what this means is that you've got to watch out for medium tempos when playing electric bass. You see slow tempos or ballads sound great when playing electric bass uh, because you've got that nice big sustain. You're playing ballads. That will all sound fine on electric bass. And fast tempos are also okay on electric because once you get up to a certain speed, uh, swung rhythms actually just become straight. So the real issue for us electric bass players is those medium tempos that you've got to watch out for when you're playing jazz or walking bass lines on electric. And by medium tempos, it means something around 100 BPM, one, two, kind of like this, four, or, or something slightly faster than that. Those are the kind of tempos when uh, the electric bass, it kind of sucks playing jazz, but there are some things that we can do to um, help us out. So I'm gonna give you three tips today. Uh, the first one is consistency. So what I mean by consistency is when you're playing walking lines, say you're playing Say you're playing that walking bass line, you wanna make sure each note is consistent. So how I actually do that is just play with one finger in my uh, plucking hand. I know a lot of bass players that just use their first finger. Um, famously, James Jameson used to, um, I think it was called the hook, and he just used to play with the first uh, finger or the index finger. But I actually prefer to use the uh, second finger just because I think there's a bit more skin there um, and I've been doing it for years. So either, either one, but just play with one finger and just you could even just start with and just making sure each note is consistent and you're not getting when playing walking bass. And that goes for when you're playing open strings, you want them to sound the same as when you're actually fretting a note as well. You wanna make sure they're consistent. Now, when trying to emulate a double bass on electric bass, I have, I think, about eight tips for you. Uh, four are to do with technique, um, actually playing and technique, and, and four are to do with um, gear and what strings and things like that. Uh, when you're trying to create more, a more consistent tone, um, a more double bass-like walking bass tone, and when you're playing in a jazz context. So as far as technique, um, I've already talked about it, but using one finger, um, is really gonna help. And you probably saw when I was using that one finger, I was also playing closer to the neck in my plucking hand. So I've got my plucking hand here, and if I was playing uh, the same bass line. I 
I think it was the same bass line, something like that. Um, but say I was playing a bass line just like that, I'd probably play up here. Um, if I'm playing finger style, I play with one finger and I'd play on the neck or closer to the neck. The second thing I could do is actually a different technique, which is palm muting, which is where you just rest um, this part of your palm on the, on the uh, back of the strings near, you're kind of near the bridge, um, and you can adjust um, on how much you want to palm mute. So if you're uh, further away from the bridge, it's going to be a more muted tone. And then as you go closer to the bridge, as your palm goes closer to the bridge, the note actually comes out a bit more. So you can actually use palm muting when uh, playing walking bass lines. So let's take that same bass line. And I really like to use palm muting because I feel like with that thumb, I can really dig in quite a bit more than the uh, fingers. It kind of depends on what I'm, what I'm playing and at what tempo and how the sound is in the room and how my, uh, what bass I have. There's quite a few factors that go into this, but those are generally the two techniques that I'll instantly go to if I'm playing um, jazz on electric. The other tip is just dig in. Now, I know there are some players that say, just turn up your amp, you don't need to dig in so much, but I find when I really want to replicate a double bass sound, um, I'd actually turn down just a little bit and I'll just make sure. And you get that clang of the strings just a little bit more because that is what a double bass kind of sounds like. As far as gear, just be aware of your EQ. I've kind of talked about it already. On my P bass here, I'll actually roll off the tone. So I've got the tone set pretty much off. I've got a little bit of tone. And it's not like there's a hard and fast rule. It's just that, you know, if I'm on a gig and I think there's a little bit too much brightness coming through. I might just roll off the, the treble. I'll just make sure I won't have that like scooped, you know, the kind of Marcus slap gospel tone. I'll make sure that the mids are quite prominent and um, I might scoop off the treble a little bit as far as EQ. The next thing is um, playing with a sponge. Yeah, so I don't I don't have my sponge with me, but generally um, if I knew I was doing like a, a jazz gig or say I was doing like a jazz set and then a, and a pop set in the evening or something, I might just bring my sponge for the whole jazz set and just place it. Um, I place it down here, right near the bridge. And that essentially just gets more, it gets that palm muting effect, but I can still play finger style. So I can play, I can play faster, so I have that flexibility in, in the plucking hand, but I've still got that nice fat muted tone. Going back to earlier in this lesson, what the sponge does, it increases the attack and it reduces the sustain. So again, it sounds more like a double bass. Pickups, this is more to uh, think about if you have like a jazz bass style where you've got the two pickups here. What I would probably do is just roll to the front pickup. Um, so that's something to consider as well. So flat wound strings are definitely something to consider if you are getting into um, more jazz style playing, as well as uh, fretless bass and things like that. You, if, if you're really serious about it, you can, you can, you can get different gear and really get more of that um, double bass tone. But I, for jazz gigs, I generally actually just use my P bass. Um, this has actually got rounds on. I did have flats, but this has just got rounds on and I'll just use the sponge and um, it gets a good, a pretty good double bass tone. I think a master at consistency when it comes to playing jazz on electric bass is someone called Jeff Andrews. He's not as well known, and I really think he's one of the most uh, underrated electric jazz bass players out there. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to give you two examples of Jeff Andrews playing um, instead of just you know randomly saying his name, I want to give you some things that you can actually go and listen to. Um, the first one is by Mike Stern. This is the album cover. The song is called Bait Tone Blues. Um, it's by Mike Stern, and it's just a trio setting. I think it's Dave Wacker on drums, Jeff Andrews on bass, Mike Stern on guitar, and uh, they're just playing a blues, uh, I think in F, and uh, the album is called Between the Lines. So you can go and check that out um, on YouTube after this video or you can check it out on Spotify. Um, but that's definitely something that is is kind of cool to hear an electric bass player who's very good at, you know, all these things we're talking about, he's very good at that. 
his walking lines and note choices are also really good as well. Um, so that's on a major blues or an F major blues. The other album um, or other recording I would check out is actually um, a live album. It's the Michael Brecker Band Live. And the song is Nothing Personal um, by Michael Brecker. And this is, I think it's in G minor, it's a minor blues. So you've got like a major blues example and a minor blues example. And just listening to how bass players walk on a blues is probably the best way to really get inside their head and understand how they approach walking bass lines on a form that everyone knows and everyone really understands. Now what I will say is these two examples are very like jazz fusion examples um, but that is kind of the reality a little bit of playing electric bass in a jazz context. You're probably going to be playing more of a fusion context um, than a traditional jazz but what I will be doing at the end of the video is revealing some more traditional jazz examples um, that you can definitely go away and transcribe as well. Jeff Andrews is also a great soloist um, and there aren't many clips on YouTube of him playing but the ones that are there are awesome so definitely check them out and I actually have a full transcription of Jeff Andrews um, walking bass stuff and solo stuff in my free Facebook group for bass players and uh, I actually went live the other day inside this group and this is what inspired this video and we had a Q&A all about playing jazz on electric. So if you are looking to take your bass playing and jazz walking lines to the next level then click the link below this video and you can get access to all my bass lessons resources and there's some step by step online courses in there as well completely for free. So my second tip for playing jazz on electric bass is to focus on groove and more specifically there's actually one big mistake electric bass players make when playing jazz and that's actually adding too many skip notes. This is the easiest way to kill the groove when playing electric bass and playing jazz. It's just adding too many of those skip notes and what I mean by skip notes is if we take that bass line example and I add too many skip notes or what, what not to do um, it would sound like this. The restrictive nature of the double bass, uh, you wouldn't be doing that on a double bass. And most of this kind of music, or jazz music, is played on a double bass. So if we want to create authentic walking lines, all of this. It can sound cool, but if you have too many skip notes, it just sounds like you're playing electric on a jazz tune. When I first started playing jazz, um, I was adding way too, because I was working on my technique at the same time, and I had way too, I was adding way too many skip notes, um, and it was just really ruining the groove. <laughs> An example of a bass player that does play electric and has the right amount of skip notes is John Patitucci. And this might be a little bit to do with him uh, also playing double bass, being a great double bass player and electric bass player. I guess he understands the language on both. But when it comes to playing um, walking lines or jazz on electric bass, he's, he, he just adds the right amount of um, those little skip notes and those inflections and those pull-offs and hammer-ons and things like that. Now, before I reveal the third tip, I have a quick question for you. It's actually question of the day. I'd love to know who your favorite jazz bass player is. And also, more importantly, let me know why. Um, and maybe I'll do a future video on them. You can let me know in the comments below. So this third tip is really the secret to creating authentic jazz walking bass lines on electric. This is the big secret. And the big secret is transcription. Now, before you click away, I already know that what you're going to say, you're going to say, oh, I already knew that jazz. I know I need to go and transcribe jazz bass lines. Um, but yeah, before you click away, I know how you feel because I hate it when teachers say, uh, oh, you just need to transcribe more uh, without actually giving any practical concepts or examples you can take away with you. So not only am I going to show you how to go about transcribing, I'll also give you some things I've picked up on from transcribing jazz double basis um, that I can pass on to you. And I've applied these things to electric bass. I'll also give you three records and jazz walking bass lines I'd recommend to check out after this video ends. So here are some things I've picked up on when transcribing double bass players on electric. The double bass and electric bass are designed differently and there's certain subtle uh, inflections that you may do on electric like the skip note thing. So for example, you could do that on electric.
that type of skip note, or you could play, but that wouldn't, you wouldn't really, you wouldn't really play that on double, you'll probably use more open strings. There'll be certain things like, um, I, oh, I see electric bass players do like octaves, like, that, a double bass player would never really, never really do that. They'll play something more like, they'll probably play more open strings as like muted and ghost notes or skip notes, um, as opposed to like, like a, like a disco octave thing. Um, so there are certain subtleties just because they're designed differently, um, like pull on hammer offs and things like that. Um, and just because of the restrictive nature of the double bass choices, uh, or note choices become quite different. So note choices is really the next thing. And that is exactly why, um, I'd recommend transcribing or well, John Patitucci, Jeff Andrews, and then these other three bass players that I'm gonna mention later. And the other thing is just use more open strings. Um, this is something that I kind of learned more from James Jameson, who you probably think of as, you know, a Motown electric bass player. As he came from a double bass background, uh, he was actually using more open strings um, in, in the Motown context. So when you're playing electric or you're trying to replicate that double bass sound, just use some more open strings. So open strings are a great way of getting up to the higher end of the fingerboard. Something like this would be more of a double bass type thing, um, but you wouldn't do it so much on electric. Using more of the G string and position shifts is really the other thing. Uh, the position is very different. On electric, I'd probably play the B flat here, but if I'm playing in a more authentic double bass way, I'd play the B flat here, and I'd play the open string, and then use that so I can make the position shift. So that's slightly different way of playing as well, using position shifts, open strings, and different note choices. The, the, all those things combined really um, help when creating authentic walking bass uh, lines. You've probably heard me use this quote in other videos, but it 100% applies here. As Miles Davis once said, first you imitate, then you innovate. This is really the secret to creating authentic jazz walking bass lines. So I wanna give you three examples um, of bass players and recordings that you can go and check out and transcribe if you're just getting your teeth into playing jazz on electric bass. So the first one, as you can see, is Ron Carter or the bass player is Ron Carter. Um, the actual song is called All of You. It's by the Miles Davis Quintet, um, live in Milan um, from 1964. So you can go and search that up on YouTube um, and check out Ron Carter playing. Uh, I really like this uh, particular bass line because it starts with a nice two fill um, and it will just really help. Some, some of those things, I think it's in B flat, so some of those things I'm talking about when using the D, the third, as um, a nice uh, open string to uh, do the position shifting. Another great example is Autumn Leaves. Um, the version that I'd recommend if you're just getting into jazz is the Cannibal Adley and Miles Davis um, version, which is off the album, Something Else. And Sam Jones is the bass player um, on that album. But if I'm completely honest, any bass lines by any of these three bass players that I'm gonna mention will be awesome to go and check out and transcribe. And finally, Paul Chambers playing on So What. Um, so What is also a great melody, like because the, uh, the melody is actually on bass. So that's a really great melody to also transcribe um, if you can on bass. And he's using, it's in D minor, so he's using a lot of open strings as well. Um, so that's on the Kind of Blue album by Miles Davis, um, and the song is called So What. If you'd like more support and access to some free online courses, make sure to click the link below to join the Bassmaster community. But other than that, have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing you in next week's video. And before you go, have you checked out this video on my channel yet? I reckon it's going to help you.